because your hands are upon our head and because of this we know that our lives are going in the right direction because our lives are powered by your grace your eyes are all over us we are your children we are the apple of your eyes your spirit watches over us thank you for giving us grace thank you for showing us mercy thank you for being our father thank you for being our strength thank you for being our shield thank you for being our sanctifier you are our lord and in you we rejoice in you we are confident in you we are sure thank you for the privilege to be called your own to be called your children <coughs> to come before your presence thank you for calling us to come now we give you praise lord blessed is the man that you call to approach i come lord oh. i'm here lord oh. Blessed is the man that you cause to approach you. I come, Lord. Oh. I'm here, Lord. Oh, lift your voice and say, say, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that you cause to approach you. I come, Lord. Oh. I'm here, Lord. Oh. Say, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man that you cause to approach you. I come, Lord, oh. I'm here, Lord, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, blessed, 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 blessed. Blessed is the man that you cause to approach you. I come, Lord, oh. And I'm here, Lord, yeah, yeah. Father, we thank you for the blessedness to approach you. Thank you for giving us this great blessing. Father, we are here again today. We have come to receive your blessing, to receive your grace, to receive of your spirit. We thank you, Father. Cause us to find you tonight. Cause our hearts to change and cause our lives to change. Be glorified, Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Praise the living Jesus. Good evening, friends. Welcome to Bible study. Welcome once again to church. It's good to always be in God's presence. And we thank God for always giving us that privilege. It's a great privilege. It's a great privilege. Many of you here, all of you, we count it a great privilege if you were to come before a president or a governor or a senator or even your local government chairman. You see it as a great privilege. Praise Jesus. But I want you to know that the greatest privilege is to approach God. It's greater than any other kind of presence in which you may appear. So you must always cherish that privilege. Whenever you come to church or you are coming to church, always come rejoicing in your heart. This was the understanding in the heart of the psalmist that made him say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because it's a privilege. Praise Jesus evermore. I welcome you once again to Bible study and I trust God that it's going to be a great time in God's presence this evening. Glory to Jesus evermore. Friends, we have a great work to do. We have to keep inviting people to church. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Keep preaching now to members. Call out, call them, remind them of services. Reach out to them, encourage them to come and invite new people. It's our responsibility. No one will invite people to, to church for us. Praise God. It's our work. Let's keep inviting people to church. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Samuel, it's good to see you. You were not around last week. What happened? Okay, what about Chidima? Tell her I want to see her. Tell her to come to church. 
that I want to see her in church. I was thinking about her was it yesterday. I felt like calling her, but I didn't have her number on my phone. Then I want her to come to church. Do you understand? Tell her to come on Sunday morning. I'm serious. Tell her to come Sunday morning to church. Huh? Uh-huh. When you guys first came that time, I was not ready. But now I think I'm ready. Tell her I'm ready to be a pastor. <laughs> if she has not yet changed her mind. Uh-huh. Praise Jesus forevermore. I'm serious. Tell her I'm ready to be a pastor. If she has not changed her mind. So tell her to come to church. Glory to God forevermore. Have your seats. God bless you. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. All right, so we're going to continue our conversation. Thriving in the midst of famine. It's been a beautiful conversation so far. Please only let me reach out to Sister Marachi after service and find out why she's not around. And you know that person that normally comes for weekly service that you know, reach out to them and find out why they are not around. Glory to God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. All right, thriving in the midst of famine. So we've been on the consideration of the matter of the seed time and harvest. We'll be looking at the seed, the power of the seed, what God has committed to you. That thing that looks so little, but how that, even though it looks so little, even though it's a seed, the harvest of your life is in that seed. Praise God forevermore. Sister Jumi, are you following me? Are you with me? That the harvest your life needs is where? Is in your seed. Is in the seed that God has given you. Is in your seed. Whatever God has committed to you, no matter how small it appears, you have to treat it with honor. You have to treat it with love. You have to treat it with reverence. You have to be committed to it. Because that is where your greatness lies. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I said last week that harvest is not a miracle. It's not a prayer point. Lord, let me be great. Lord, let there be. And all of that, let the harvest come. No, 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 no. <coughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. I said harvest is the outcome of being faithful with the seed. If you are not faithful with the seed that God has committed to you, with the, with the seeming little things that God has committed to your, to your hands, are you following me? You should not expect a glorious harvest. Harvest cannot come from God to you. Praise God forevermore. So harvest is the outcome of being faithful with the seed. So you see many Christians praying for harvest, praying for increase, praying for greatness, praying for God to enlarge them, praying for God to increase them. But the little things, the seed, the little things that represent the seed that God has committed to their hands, they are not faithful. Praise Jesus forevermore. You can't be so prayerful and yet unfaithful to your seed and expect a glorious harvest. It doesn't work that way. Are you following me? Harvest is God's reward system for faithfulness with the seed. If you stay faithful with your seed, the harvest will surely come. Glory to Jesus forevermore. I want to continue in the book of Luke chapter 19. And I just want to say one thing to you this evening. Praise God. Shout hallelujah. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. You can read from verse 11. Luke chapter 19. Praise God forevermore. So some of you, you look at the little things God has committed to your hands. Praise God. You look at the seed that God has given you. You look at the seeming little things God has committed to you and you are wondering that even the God himself that committed these things to your hand. Are you following me? You are wondering if God himself ever believes that this thing can become great. Are you with me? God commits something little to your hand, a seed, which represents a seed, a little job, a little business, a little church that is just starting, a relationship, are you following me? That appears that what can you even gain from it? As if you can't gain anything from it. Are you following me? He commits a marriage to your hand, commits people to you. He commits different things to your hand in form of a seed. Are you with me, my friends? Glory to Jesus forevermore. Are you yourself, you are wondering, you are thinking, that does God ever think, that does God sincerely think, 
that this seed will become great. Are you following me? It's like me thinking that does God sincerely think that this church will become so big that this will not be enough for our children's church? Are you following me? The Lord told us to pastor a church here. Are you following me? That do you sincerely mean? How many members, how many people did we start with? And you are telling us <laughs> of how great the church will be. Do you sincerely mean that this thing in our hand, <laughs> that this church would sincerely become that great? Are you following me? You know, sometimes you have that question in your heart. That is God whining me. Is God serious about this? God looks at your life, which is also a kind of seed that he has committed to you, and begins to tell you great things about your life. Begins to tell you about the great things about your life. And you look at that life before your very face. You look at your life before you. You look at the things you are going through. You look at the things that are not working. Are you with me, my friend? And you are asking yourself that is God sincere about the things he's talking to me about? You are talking to me of greatness and I'm going to be so great. But look at what I'm going through. Look at this life. You look at that seed in your hand and, and, you, are, and, you, are, and you are asking God. That is God really serious about this greatness he's talking about. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. I want to tell you this evening that not only is God serious about how that your seed should become great. Or must become great. Are you following me? I want to tell you this evening that God is committed to the success of your seed. Are you with me, my friends? God is what? God is committed to the success of your seed. <laughs> Are you following me? God is committed to the success of this life. God is committed to the success of that your marriage. God is committed to the success of your business. God is committed to the success of your career. God is committed to the success of whatever he has committed to you. Are you following me? You are not the only one desirous, are you following me, of an harvest from your life. Are you with me, my friends? You are not the only one, what? You are not the only one desirous of an harvest from the seed of your life. Or from whatever seed God has committed to you. You are not the only one desirous of an harvest. God himself is desirous of an harvest. God is looking out for the greatness of your life. It doesn't matter what is going on right now. It doesn't matter what you're passing through. It doesn't matter what that seed looks like. Don't forget this is a series. It has been a series. It has been a matter of be considering. And I've told you the characteristics of a seed and of your seed time. A seed does not look beautiful. A seed is not appealing. The seed time is not pleasurable. There are times of contradictions. There are times where the things you are going through don't look like the things that God has spoken to you about. In those periods, you will almost doubt the things that God has said to you. But you must understand, as I said to you, that you must never doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. Are you following me, my friends? So, you need to understand that God himself, there's a commitment in the art of God towards your greatness. There's a commitment in the heart of God towards the production of an harvest from your seed. God is committed to the success of your seed. Are you following me? If there's anything God is looking out from your life, are you following me? It is an harvest. It is the success of your life. God wants you to be a success. God wants, wants what he has committed to your hand to be what? A success. God has no other expectation. And he is so committed to this success. Are you following me? 
He arranges everything. Even when it doesn't look like it. He arranges everything to work towards the success of your seed. It might not look at it at the, it might, it might not look like it at the moment. Are you following me? Are you with me? It might not look like it at the moment, but God is working at the background. Are you with me? And even with the fact that He committed a seed into your hand, are you following me? He shows His commitment to, to the success of your life. Because the only thing God can give you, are you following me? To bring you into greatness, to bring you into an harvest, the only thing he can give you is a seed. Are you with me, my friends? Luke 19, verse 11. Let's start from there. We've read it before. Let's read it again. And as they heard these things, he heard it and spake a parable. Because it was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went to a far country. To receive for himself a kingdom and return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy it till I come. But the citizens heard him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded that his servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Verse 16. Then came the fourth saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. Go back to verse 15. Then came the fourth saying, what? Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. So I've been emphasizing to you that whatever God commits into your hands has the capacity to what? To increase. Are you with me? It has capacity to what? To increase. It has the capacity to increase. Are you following me? But the increase can only come as a trade. Praise Jesus forevermore. But I said I want to say to you this evening that God is committed to what? To the success of your seed. Praise Jesus forevermore. God is committed to what? To the success of your seed. Is it success or success or anyone I like? Success. Success. Just anyone you like. And if you like, say, succeeds. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. And it came to pass that when he was returned, don't forget when he was going, he called those ten guys and gave them one pound worth each. He gave this one pound, gave this one pound, gave them one pound round each. <laughs> Are you following me? I told them to go ahead to occupy, to trade with it, to do business. Are you following me? He did not give anyone one pound more than the other person. He gave them an equal amount of pound. Are you following my friend? Now watch this. What is the emphasis of this evening? God is committed to what? To the success of your seed. Are you with me? His expectation concerning your seed, concerning your life, concerning that thing in your hand, his only expectation is success. Are you following me, my friends? God cannot understand your failure. How do I mean? God, your life becomes a failure, and God says, oh, I, under, I understand. No, no, no. God is shocked. He's surprised. He's not expecting it. He's not expecting it. The only thing he expects your life to produce is what? Success. And he's committed to it. I need to understand it. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to what? To give you a future and a hope to bring those unexpected in. <coughs> are you following me? Have you received the kingdom? Then he commanded his servants to be called unto him. Now watch it closely. To be called unto him. To whom he had given the money. <laughs> How much did he give them? One pound each, right? Tell them to be called unto him. Uh huh. Please look at the next statement closely. That he might know how much every man had gained by trading. That he might what? 
that he might know how much every man has gained by trading. The only thing he wants to know is how much you have gained. Please, I need you to understand the heart of God. Excuse me, when you are involved in a trade, when you are involved in a business, is there no possibility of losing? Talk to me, is there no possibility of losing? There is a possibility, right? Profit and loss, right? There's a, prob- pro- there's a possibility of losing. Now, but in whatever seed God hands over to you, there is no possibility of losing. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Whatever God commits into your hands, are you following me? There's no possibility of what? Of losing. The only possibility of that seed is to what? Is to gain. And that is the expectation of God. There is no possibility in the eyes of God, in the plan of God, this is your life. There is no possibility of losing that eventually now say, hey, my life is a failure. No, 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 no. The only possibility that God looks, that God thinks about this life, about the seed in your hand, is gain, is success. That he might know how much every man had gained. What did you want to know? What did you want to know? How much every man had gained? Please watch it closely. He didn't say that he might know if every man had gained. Did he say if? Hmm? That means he was so sure that everyone he had committed that seed to, that talent to, the pound, he was so sure that the only possibility is what? Is gain. That's the only expectation. Guys, the only expectation of God for this, your life, are you following me, is greatness. You need to understand that. The only expectation of God for your life, for whatever he has committed to you, is success. Am I saying that there cannot be failures along the way? No, 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 no. I'm saying that at the end of the day, even when you add up those failures, what you will have as equal to the final answer is success. Have you ever solved an equation as you, and as you were solving the equation, it's not looking like it's the answer, it's not looking interesting. How many of you have solved that kind of equation? The equation you are solving, you are thinking, hey, 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 hope I'm not solving rubbish. <laughs> hope I'm not solving rubbish. The, the solution looks like rubbish. But eventually you arrive at the equal to final answer. Are you following me? See, see, see. My friends, what you go through in the journey, the, 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 the inconsistencies, the things that appear not to be working, are you following me? They are part of the equation that God eventually expects to arrive or to become a success. Are you following me? Eventually, God wants to look at this life. Don't forget, he told them to trade, to trade with the pound. Trading involves a lot of processes. Are you following me? Trading involves a lot of time. Trading involves a lot of things. In fact, it is even possible that even the guy that gained 10 pounds, it's possible that in the process he had lost before. Oh, friends, are you with me? See, 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 see. The present failure is not the finality. The finality of this, your life, the expectation of God is the greatness. That when everything eventually adds up, what we have is what? Success. Are you following me? Guys, the failures are part of the story. Oh, friends, can you hear me? That delay is part of what? The story. What happened along the way was not important. He said to find out that he might know how much each man has gained. Do you know in a business, it's possible to first lose before you gain? <laughs> Are you following me? It's possible to first what? It's possible to first lose before you gain. <laughs> Are you following me? And it's also possible that you start with gain and eventually you lose everything. Oh, but in this equation of your life, in this thing that God has committed to your hand, God says along the way, in the process, there might be losses. 
But eventually, when I'm coming back, <laughs> when I'm coming back to visit you, what I'm looking for is the gain. What I'm looking for, what I'm looking out for is the greatness. Eventually, it will amount to greatness. Eventually, it will amount to success. <laughs> Are you with me, my friends? Are you with me? Have you seen people who, 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 who got involved in a business and they started, hey, hey, I'm gaining, I'm gaining. They were very happy. And at the long run, they now put all the gain. Because they've, they've never lost before. They were gaining, 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 gaining. They now put everything. <laughs> Particularly those that did MMM in those days. They now put everything back. And that everything back was not the one that now what? Crashed. Now, between that person, I'm, I'm not using MMM as an example. I'm, like, I'm even using it as an example, anyone you like. Business, anything. MMM is not a business. So. I'm a scam. The legitimate business. I'm just, I'm just trying to call them MMM so that people can, you can relate with, 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 with what I'm saying. Because some of you did it before God saved your soul. <laughs> then you were still in the world. Praise Jesus. Now, between someone that does a business and was gaining, 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 and eventually lost everything. Are you following me? And someone that also does a business and was losing, 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 losing. And he just said, okay, let me put the last money. <laughs> And he now eventually put the last money and invested. Are you following me? And the gain he made overturns all the losses he has ever made. Are you following me? That eventually when he calculates all the losses, all the losses he ever made, are you following me? And subtract them from the gain and the capital that is still equal to gain. Are you following me? Between that person and the first guy, that was gaining, 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 and now eventually lost. Who actually gained? <laughs> Tell me, who gained? Who gained? Who, who did business and gain? Tell me now. Who do you want to be like? The guy that first was and first gain. But when it was happening, hey, in the process, can you hear me, my friends? In the process, when it was happening, when he was losing and the other guy was gaining, you know you feel like exchanging destiny with the other guy. Hey. Some of you feel like you're standing your destiny. You feel like you should just be in this other person's shoes. Hey, because you don't even know the end of your story. Oh, manamo sahalabaya. You don't know the end of your story. You don't know how it will end. I'm here tonight to tell you how it's going to end. It's going to end as a great success. How is it going to end? It's going to end as a great success. Are you following me? Oh, manako sava nanti kalabaya. That is why you must never compare your life with anybody's life. <coughs> Are you following me, my friends? Your seed is your assignment. You must face your seed. Your seed is what you must focus on, like I told you last week. Oh, my friends, your seed might appear not to be growing. Hey, someone else's seed might appear to have become a tree. But focus on your seed. Focus on your seed. Focus on what? On your seed. Now, when the other guy was doing his business and all, all, all he was having was losses, 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 losses. And the other guy was gaining, gaining, gaining. That, that one would feel like dying. You feel like committing suicide. You feel like ending it. Sometimes when some people even quit the business. Hey! That, oh, this last one. <laughs> I've been losing. If I, instead of putting this last one, let me go and eat to eat. He just asked what would have brought him a lifetime back in. Some of you quit, are you following me? At the point where you are about to get the final answer. Are you following me? How many of you have been solving questions in the exam hall and you are about, you know you are about to arrive at the final answer and they came to collect your answer sheet? You know I used to pay. Hey! Are you following me? <coughs> Praise Jesus. You know you have about three lines to the final answer. And they say, time up. And you are trying, trying, trying. And you know that your lecturer likes final answer. Oh! 
Have you seen those lecturers? That no matter what you saw, 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 they must see the fact. They, they know the, the answer is in the eye. They know the answer is, is two, two RPM, two revolution per minute. No matter if you like, saw from Cambridge, if that two RPM is not there, is zero. Even though what you have solved is correct. How many of you are, know that kind of lecture? Those, those kind of lecturer. Now, if you are doing that kind of course, are you following me? And you solve, 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 you are about to arrive at the final answer. And they collected your answers, answer sheet. You know it's as if you have failed the course. What you worked on did not matter. Are you following my friends? Praise Jesus, evermore. Some of you, this is your lives. You are about to get to the final answer. And you are already, th- and you are already thinking of submitting. <laughs> are you following me? You are already thinking of submitting. <laughs> you can't submit yet. You have to solve until you arrive at the final answer. Are you following my friends? Don't submit yet. Go back and write. Can I say go back and write? Go back and keep writing. You can't submit yet. What am I saying? I'm saying you can't give up yet. Because God knows the final answer. And you are about to arrive there. Oh, friends, can you hear me? God does what? He knows the final answer. That he might know how much every man had gained. The only thing in his head is gain. Yes, he knows that in the process of arriving at gain, he knows that there might be some losses. There might be what? Oh, there might be some losses, my friend. If I tell you there won't be some losses, I'm lying to you. But I'm telling you, add all the losses. At the end of the work, at the end of the day, what the master sees is what? Is gain. What that's what he wants. That's his expectation. <coughs> Are you following me? See, friends, the losses of your life, the perceived losses of your life, the perceived failures. Are you following me? Are actually parts of the solution that leads to the final answer called gain. Friends, this is your life will gain. No? Hey, if you continue trading, that you might know how much every man had gained by trading. I'm telling you, if you continue trading, if you continue focusing on that thing that God has put in your hand, if you continue com- to be committed to that life, if you continue, if you fix your eyes on the vision, you will gain. <coughs> Are you following my friends? Are you with me, my friends? Are you with me? That thing that looks like jargons is part of the solution. Guys, you know I saw the mechanical engineering house. We solved a lot of equations. So they'll be solving even like, hey, this thing does not make sense. But as you solve it down, you, you know, you, there are some questions you solve, solve, at some point it will make sense. As you keep solving. If, after you pass one level again, it will not make sense again. You get to another place, the solution will not make sense again. Guys, are you following me? But at the end of the day, it will make sense. We have a final answer called gain. Called what? You have a final answer called the harvest. You have a final answer called success, called greatness. Are you following, my friends? Friends, I'm telling you that the failures are part of the solution that leads to the success. Oh, oh, friends, are you hearing me? Your failure is part of the solution. <laughs> oh, you, you didn't understand me. Your failure is part of what? It's part of the solution. <coughs> this guy didn't tell us maybe he lost or not until he eventually arrived at gain. But we know how business works. We know how what? We all know how business works. Sometimes you, you lose before you gain. Are you following me? Some of you are, you are losing already. And you already come, and you are already thinking that that, the losses that you are incurring right now, you are already thinking that, what, what do you used to, used to do at the end of the year? Companies. Tell me, tell me, tell me, you are an accountant, a chartered accountant for that matter. Don't come and uh, disgrace me. What do they used to do? To do profit and loss, to see what they've gained at the end of the year. Maybe they, they, they lost or, Ah. Hmm. Wow. We need to I, I just you don't understand my question. You should have understood it by now. That companies at the end of the year, 
they will now take all their account. Ah, I don't know if they used to put balance sheet there. There's a professional word. <coughs> ah, you cannot forget that this time will be remembering, but I'll still come back to it. There's a word they used to they fi, financial. Eh, what is it? Financial said, no man, please. Oh, my one working that around. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't like balance sheet. Let's use financial. Let that financial, let that word come out. Uh-huh, professional. So at the end of the year, are you following me? When companies, is it that they do their financial? When, hey, when they prepare their financial statements. Are you following me? You hear them, they say, this year, we made a profit of 10 billion era. Are you following me? Now, what did they tell you they made? A profit of what? 10 billion era. They come out in the financial statement. What they declare is the profit. Are you following me? But mind you, in preparing that statement, there were times in the year where they experienced what? Losses. Friends, is that true? But in presenting the final financial statement to you, to customers in saying, oh, we made a profit off. Would the losses matter anymore? Friends, I'm telling you, the losses of your life will not matter. Friends, can you hear me? The losses you are incurring right now in this trade called your life, with this seed called your life, with this thing God has come there to you, they will not matter. Because at the end of the financial year, are you following me? Your profiting will appear to all men. Can you hear me? Your what? Your profiting will what? We appear to all men. What you will declare is profit. Oh, friends, can you hear me? What would you declare? Because that is what the master is expecting you to declare. Are you following me? So this master called them at the end of, of the financial year. And the only thing he was expecting was, the, was what? The declaration of what? Of profit. The declaration of profit. He knows that, yes, along the way they might have been called losses. Are you following me? That along the way they might have been losses. They might have been failure. But what did he call it to come and declare? Profits. Guys, what God wants you to declare is profit. What does God want you to declare? And he's committed. He said that in my knowledge. That is what he wants to know. He does not doubt it. He trusts what he has committed to you. That the only thing at the end of the day he expects you to declare is profit. Are you following me? What does God expect you to declare at the end of the day? Profit. Oh, but don't forget that in declaring profit, in arriving at that final answer called profit, in the statement, at the back end, that the customers don't see, that all men, he said that their profit, that their profit may appear to what? All men. Are you following me? At the back, back end, in the preparation of the statement, are you following me? It's not everybody that sees the losses. Because, are you following me? Because to arrive at the final statement called profit, you must have done plus and minus. Are you following me? You added the profit you made in so so month, you, you subtracted the loss you made in a particular week. Are you following me? Now, at the back end, not everybody sees what, what is going on. Everybody might not appreciate what you are going through right now. Are you following me? But eventually, your profit will appear to all men. Eventually, I'm saying that you are going to declare profits. Friends, you can't hear me. I say eventually, what, what will you declare? You declare profits. You declare profits. I'm explaining to you this way so that you will not be shocked at the losses that you might be going through presently. That you go through losses, that you experience losses or something, you cannot still declare profit. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you with me? Is that true? So don't let your present losses, are you following me? Don't let it make you sign out of the trading. Guys, you must keep trading. Don't know how much every man has gained by trading. You must keep what? You must keep trading. That he might know. He wants to know how much you have gained by trading. The only thought in his heart is that this guy should gain. 
The only thought in God's heart is your increase. That he might know. He didn't say that he might know if. Do you know if he says if? That means there's a possibility. Is either it arrived, is either at the end of the financial year, what you have is what? Loss. <laughs> Are you following me? So if he says if, that means it's possible that in declaring a financial statement, at the end of the financial year, it's possible you are declaring a profit or a loss. But this is why he says that he might know how much they have gained. Oh, guys, are you, are you following these things? So, the master gave them a pound each. And the only thing he was expecting is what? Is what? His profit, his gain. Guys, this is your life. The only thing God thinks is what? Is gain. The only thing God thinks is greatness. Don't forget, he didn't come back immediately, he gave them a pound. He went for a long time. Are you following me? Guys, the journey of greatness, the journey of gaining, of profiting is a long one. There will be some losses. Are you following me? There will be what? There will be some losses, there will be some failures. There will be times when things are not working. When you, oh, friends, there will be times when you feel like closing up the business. <laughs> Are you following me? <laughs> Even the business called your life. There will be times when you feel like shutting it down. Are you following me? But the time that you are about to close, <laughs> that you are about to close it up angrily, might be the time that your real customers are coming. Are you following my friends? That it might know how much every man had gained. How much every man had gained by trading. Friends, God is committed to the success of your seed. If this man were not committed to the success of these guys, he would not have an expectation of what? Of profit. <laughs> Are you following me? He was so sure of himself. That the pound I've given to these guys, are you following me? There's potential in it for gain. Guys, your life has the potential to become anything. There's potential in your life. There's potential in the things in your hand. In whatever God has given you, there's potential. There's potential for greatness. And that is why God only expects greatness. God only expects increase. Are you following me? Can I talk to you? You can keep adding up the, the, the present failures. Keep adding, keep adding them up. Are you following me? You can keep adding up what? The present failures. This is, do you know in, in presenting the financial statement, do you know if you remove the losses, are you following me? Do you know it will not balance? Will it balance? <laughs> if they say, at the end of this financial year, we made a, we made a profit of 10 billion naira. The losses have been added. The, the losses have been what? Have been added. Are you following me? Now, do you know if the if the losses were not considered? Hey, show my come work basically. As you you are the accountant that is to prepare the financial statement. Are you following me? Are you following my friends? And in the process of the preparation, there were losses before the final gain of ten billion. Are you following me? There were already losses of like maybe five billion. Are you following me? Now, in preparing the statement, you didn't consider the loss of five billion. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? You now added. You now said, as if I the accountant to the final account, final accountant, I'll be final account anything. You just came to final account. Are you following me? You now prepare. You now said, ah, you now told the manager, the company. That our gain this year is 15 billion. <laughs> Are you following me? Are you with me? In fact, you might not be able to get to, fi- to a final answer. But let's assume you, somehow, somehow, somehow you manage to get to a final answer of, of 15 billion. You know the remaining 5 billion your, is your generation that will pay for the next 20 years. <laughs> all your father's house, all of you and your children's children. children. You know you will find you will pay that debt because it's not part. Are you following me? Because you didn't consider it. It was. Are you following me? Because the profit you declare was wrong because you didn't consider the losses. 
Are you following me? So it will unsettle the company, it will unsettle your life. Are you following me, my friends? It will what? Unsettle. It's not balanced. That, that statement is not balanced. Are you with me? Guys, the failures you are going through currently, are you following me? The losses you are going through currently, don't try to remove them from your life. Otherwise, it won't be balanced when you are presenting the financial statement. <laughs> are you following me? Don't try to, don't try, don't try to remove it. Don't, it's part, it will, it will add up. Friends, I'm telling you, it will add up. Are you following me? Don't try, don't try to remove it. Don't try to quickly come out of it. Enjoy your process. That's, that's the point here. Do what? Enjoy your process. Oh, enjoy the journey. Can you see enjoy the journey? Oh, enjoy the journey. Trading is, it gave them a pound. It went away for a long time. To go and that they should trade is a journey. In the process, there were losses. But at the end, we saw the gain after they had added up all the losses and everything. Guys, enjoy your process. Don't try to eliminate anything. Are you following me? If you try to eliminate it, the account will not balance. The ESCC will carry you. They will say, Where's the remaining 5 billion? And they'll not know that it's your accounting error. Are you following me? You eliminated losses. You didn't consider it. Yes, it will be after you. Are you following me? Guys, this your life will not balance if you try to eradicate the unpleasantness in your process. You have to enjoy it. It's part of the story. Guys, I'm not motivating you. I'm teaching you scriptures. It's part of the story. Imagine Joseph trying to eradicate the prison and Potiphar's house from his story. He will never get to the throne. Oh, guys, can you hear me? Can you hear me, my friends? Imagine Joseph. See, see, the only way Joseph will get to the throne is that his brothers must hate him. His brothers must sell him. He must go to Potiphar's house. He must become a slave. That is the only way. That is the way to his destiny. Imagine him, they, they now showed him that part of this. He now say, ah, this one I don't. Why? Please just remove that prison part. <laughs> Please remove Potiphar's house. What has he asked them to remove? Tell me, tell me what they has asked them. He has asked them to remove his destiny. Guys, some of you are wishing that this cup will just pass over you. I pray that you will say, nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Because that is the path to the throne. Hey, friends! The cross is the path to the throne. What you are going through is part of the process that will lead to your gain. Don't try to eliminate it. And don't feel shy about it. Oh! Don't do what? Don't feel shy about it. Embrace your boldness with, embrace your process with boldness. Embrace your process with joy. Every part of the journey, embrace it with boldness. This is the present story, but I know the final answer. Oh, friends, I pray your eyes will be open to see the final answer. That even when the present story is not interesting, you already know the final answer. Have you seen those movies that your most loved actor died? Are you following me? Are you already crying? And at the end of the movie, they all say that the actor did not die. Say, actor, no, they die. <laughs> it's the actor, no, they... And they showed it that the actor died in the bomb. That there was a bomb blast. Go! And they showed that his head scatter. <laughs> he has died. And you're already crying that, ah, this man is not supposed to die. They just showed him later in another country. They showed him another country. They just said, actually, that what happened was that they arranged another person to die. That it was not him that he, had, he escaped. <laughs> actor, no, they die. Guys, you are an actor. You know if you die for this movie. It was not you that died. It was somebody else. <laughs> are you following me? You escaped. You didn't die. Now actor you be. You be actor. Actor know they die for fame. 
In this film, you cannot die. So enjoy the process. <coughs> Are you following, my friends? Enjoy the process. Be bold about the process. Don't be shy. Hello? Where are you praying? What, what are you doing presently? This is where I am. Now, what can they do be this? I never get a job. I see they trust God. Don't say me to me. I'm, 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 I'm trading crypto. <laughs> I know that that's your crypto. It's only 2K that is there. <laughs> You're not trading crypto. <laughs> You're not trading crypto. Hello, Ezekiel, how are you doing? Oh, this is your friend that was, you were, you were our class governor. I'm now in the UK. You, where are you? Where are you presently? What are you doing? <laughs> it's going to be like, well, I'm serving God and I'm also doing business. I'm, you're not doing business. <laughs> are you following me? See, don't try to make the story sweet. Leave it like that. Do what? Leave it like that. If you try to make the story sweet, you will spoil the entire storyline. Are you following me? Because when they were writing that part of the story, they already decided how it will end. Are you following me? That's what, that's what makes it, you know that's what makes those movies interesting. Ah, the actor did not die. Hey, I will I'll show. I see this real life and they are lying to you. You're happy. It makes it very interesting. Are you following me? Do you know that there are some movies, there are some things you're expecting will happen. Uh, this is what will happen. Eventually, it will never happen. It will, it will be something, you expect that something evil will happen. Ah! My boy, it's very cool. My boy, it's very cool. Don't kill this guy. They will kill this guy. As they will kill this, they will, ah, they will kill this guy. I know those sound. And they live, see, that sound is part of, is part of the movie. That soundtrack. It's to create suspense. It's called suspense. Guys, many of you are going through a lot of suspense. But we know the end of the story. Are you following me? And eventually the guy, does, the guy does not die. Something good happens to him. Guys, can I talk to you? The plans of the enemy, the expectations of the, the, expectations of the enemy will not come to pass over this your life. There might be suspense. Ging, 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 ging. <laughs> Are you following me? But we know how it will end. Guys, you need to know the end of the story of this your life. Oh. It is game that the master is expecting. Oh. That's the only thing. <laughs> Are you following me? He's not saying you might not suffer from losses. Oh. But he's saying when you add up everything, he's saying it is gain. Oh. oh, that he might know how much every man has gained. That he might know how much every man again. Okay? The only thing he wants to know about this life is what? Is gain. Is profitability. Is profiting. Is gain. Please don't edit the story. Don't try to make it sound good. And you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor at the God of I'm also, I'm into some businesses. I sell cars. I sell cars. You don't even have a bike. You don't sell cars. Don't stop lying. <laughs> You know how those calls can make you feel? Or you just meet your friend suddenly. And the guy just ping, 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 ping. And your own legs are already dirty. You know here? Yeah? Ping, 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 ping. The guy is in one nice bands. And he was the dullest guy in the class. And you, you, are, you, are, you were always having a first class result. <laughs> you are not like to do tutorial for them. The guy now ping, ping, ping. Your trouser is, ah. You know, and I say, oh, is it, how are you? Where are you? This girl say, oh, how are you, my friend? I'm fine. Actually, my car, my car is at the mechanic. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I just, I just went to, to heat down there. My car is at the mechanic. It's at the mechanic. It's not at the, it's only, it's not at the mechanic. Your car is not at the mechanic. The guy say, okay, like, can I drop you at the mechanic? He said, no, don't worry, don't worry. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for someone. I'm waiting for someone. You don't change your English to phone, eh? <laughs> you don't need it. Greedy guy. Guy, how are you doing? Oh, you've become so great. God has blessed you. I'm very happy for you. What about you? Oh, this is what I'm doing presently. Do you know some of you already appear great before someone that should help you? <laughs> you don't understand? You don't have, you don't have a bicycle. Now your friend has good cars. He has, he, he has made it in life. The way he saw you, you were so nice to him in school. The first thing he saw you, the first thing he thought of was 
to help you. That this guy was so, how can I repay him? I already appear like a billionaire to him. <laughs> you already appear richer than the guy. In your conversation, you already have 20 companies. In your conversation, you are expecting a container from Spain, three from, from Afghanistan, four from Ukraine. The guy is already intimidated. The guy that already has everything is already intimidated. Oh, the guy Coco keeps in, his help to himself. The guy now thinks he, he is the one, you are the one that needs to help him. So you lose help. Guys, leave, leave the story like that. Can I say leave the story like that? Please leave the story like that. No touch on, no touch on, no touch on, no touch on. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. The guy, the guy likes you so much. You were so kind to him in school. The moment he saw you, hey, now my friend with this, you already saw that, that your shoe, oh, Tiriba type, but you lied about it. You said you were in a hurry in the morning. You just, you just wore your brother's shoe. <laughs> you wore your brother's shoe. The guy was already planning on how to award you a contract. But you that you already have 20 companies. What contract does the guy want to award you again? You already a billionaire. The guy said he's begging you that remember me. Remember me. <laughs> the guy that wants to remember you. I was already thinking of remembering you when he saw you. He's not begging you that you should remember him. Some of you shot. You shot out your blessing, shot out your help. Because you are trying to amend your story. You are trying to what? You are trying to amend your story. You will spoil the, you will spoil the movie. You will do what? You will spoil the movie. See, 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 see. If you try to amend the story, you will spoil the movie. You will spoil the entire movie. Don't amend the story. The movie will not end well. Oh, it does not matter what Joseph did. If the guy did not go to prison, if he did not go through everything that God has planned, he will never get to the throne. Are you following me? We found that in we found that in Psalms that everything was planned. Are you following me? Someone of us showed that what that God planned everything. He planned everything. Even the family planned it. Guys, this your life is planned, though. I mean your life is planned. Can I can I can I can I hear you say my life is planned? Life is planned. Some of you think it's only the gain that is planned. Don't forget there is a process that leads to the gain. Are you following me? The entire script, right from the handing over of the siege to the losses and everything and the final gain, they planned it. It's planned. Oh, your life is so planned. I only wish I can see the end of the story. Emmanuel, don't, don't try to make the story look good. It's fine like that. It's fine that you don't have, that, that things are not working yet. It's part of the story. Are you following my friends? See, I'm trying to, I said God is committed to the what? To the success of your seed. That is, you, that is his expectation. And that must be your what? Expectation. Have I said there won't be failures along the way? Have I said there won't be losses along the way? But what am I talking about? I'm talking of the expectation. I'm talking of the final answer. Guys, talk to me. What's the final answer of this, your life? This game, this success, this, this profit. The final answer of this seed in your hand, of the thing in your hand is game. Oh, tell me, I know the final answer of this church. And that's why we keep laboring the way we are laboring. I know the final answer. Do you understand? And this present condition is part of the process. It's part of the equation we are solving. And we'll keep solving it, solving it, solving it. See, some part of the equation is not sweet. But we'll not stop solving the equation. We know the final answer. Do you know it's so sweet when you know the final answer and you are trying to walk towards the final answer? Do you know that way is even sweet? Do you know that way is sweet? <laughs> Please, can you know the final answer and you know that your life is just going towards the final answer? Please, guys, be sure of the final answer of this your life. I need you to be sure. God is sure. That is his only expectation. To know how much every man had gained. By trading. Are you following? 
When God is calling you to account for your life, what, what, what is he calling you to account for? What is the final account he's calling you to be? Account of gain, of profit. Are you following me? It's gain. Guys, this is your life will end in praise. This is your life you do what? It went in praise. It went in gain. It went in greatness. It went in profitability. It went in massive profit, massive harvest. Oh, this story is so amazing to me. To know how much what? Some, some of them. To know how much who? Every man. So everyone he gave the seed to. What was his expectation? Gain. Guys, can you hear me? See, you have no reason for failure. You have no reason that at the end of everything, when we now add up everything, what we now have is now failure. It's, it's lost. It. There's no reason, no. Because the owner of that life, the owner of what is in your hand, the person that gave you, are you following me? He said the man, that he may know how much every man has gained. That means there's no man that has received something from him that is expecting failure from. That after we adopt everything, it's now failure. Are you following me? So if he says that he might know how much every man, can you say every man? That means everyone he gave the, the pound to. Are you following me? His only expression about them was what? Was gain. So talk to me, if everyone eventually runs into a loss, whose person's fault? Whose fault will it be? Talk to me, whose fault will it be? The person's fault. Guys, can I talk to you? God's own expectation about this, your life is success. If your life eventually becomes a failure, it's your fault. It's your fault. It's not God's fault. And why would he be expecting gain from every man? Talk to me, why would he be expecting gain from every man? Because, number one, the seed he gave them has the capacity to gain. And he himself is committed to the success of that seed. Are you following me? Guys, God is expecting your life to produce massive success. Because the life, there's a blessing upon it. There's a blessing of increase, a blessing of fruitfulness, a blessing of multiplication. The seed is powerful and God is committed to the success of that seed. He's expecting. He's expecting it. Guys, if God is expecting it, you must be expecting it also. You must be what? Expecting it also. That you might know how much every man had gained. This is so powerful. Again, how? By wishful thinking. How do you gain? By trading. Guys, you only gain by trading. Are you following me? This shows me that if I continue to trade, regardless of what is going on around me, what will happen? I begin. Guys, focus on your journey. Don't be distracted by what is going on around you. Focus on this your life. If you are not focused, you can't trade, you can't gain. Trading needs focus. Are you following me? Trading needs focus. Trading needs commitment. Trading needs faithfulness. Faith, trading needs consistency. Trading needs discipline. Trading needs courage. Trading needs boldness. Trading needs persistence. Can you say continue? Guys, if you continue, you will gain. Continue. Can I hear you say again, continue? Continue. Guys, I'm telling you, if you continue, you will gain, no. Because to know how much every man has gained by trading. See, see, see. The only man that did not gain in this story. Can you tell me why? Tell me why, tell me why. The only man, there was only one man that didn't gain in this, in this story. What, why, why didn't he gain? He didn't trade. <laughs> oh, friends, can you hear me? He didn't trade. Not because market was bad. Not because the forex market crashed. Not because never crashed against dollar. Are you following me? See, 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 see. The only reason why your life would, would become a complete fail, failure is when you don't trade. Your life will not become an eventual failure because some things went wrong at some point in time. 
You will not become an eventual failure because some things did not work out at some point in time. You will not become an eventual failure because there were, because there, there were some delays and some limitations at some point. You will only become an eventual failure when you don't trade. Are you with me? When you don't what? When you don't trade. When you don't trade. When you don't trade. Out of ten people, only one man did not gain. And thank God the, the Bible showed us why. Otherwise, we'll be confused. The man did not trade. Some of you are burying your life. Can I tell you how you're burying it? Some of you are burying it in worry. You are worrying too much. Some of you are burying it in the, in the soil of distraction. You are distracted. You are distracted by many things, including the success of another man. You are distracted. Some of you are burying this, your life. You are burying this, your, your seed. You are burying what God has given you in the soil of sorrow. You are too sad. In the soil of hopelessness. In the soil of despair. Different kinds of soil. Some of you have given up. Guys, I can assure you that if you bury this seed, you cannot gain. <laughs> are, you are you following me? See, see, see. The only reason why a man will not gain with what God has given him is, is if he buries it. <laughs> are you following me? If you what? The man said, as you can't, can't, go back, go back, go back. How much every man had gained by trading? So the man was sure that anyone who traded with that seed would what? Would gain. Oh, guys, I don't, I don't want to ask you tonight. Would you keep trading regardless? Would you keep trading? The Bible says, He that beholded the wind does not what? Will not sow. Hey, can, can you find that scripture too for me? He that looks at the wind that beholds the wind will not sow. That means in the matter of trading with this your life, trading with the seed that God has committed to you, you must not look at what is going on around you. Are you following me? Don't look at what? Don't look at what is going on around you. Don't look at your present difficulties. Don't look at, uh, don't look at your present condition. Don't look at other people. Focus on your seed. He that observed the wind shall not sow. He that regarded the clouds shall not reap. When you are considering the things going on around you, are you following me? And it's causing you to bury your seed. You won't rape. You won't be able to trade. And if you don't trade, you won't rape. Guys, the seed you are carrying is too precious to be buried. See, you never, you never know what would have become, what, can, what your life can amount to if you don't trade with it. Are you following me? Some of you are burying your life, you are burying your seed, what God has given you, in a sort of procrastination. Some of you are procrastinating too much. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, 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 it will be 20 years. Are you following me, my friends? Go back to our scripture. If you trade, I'm sure you will gain. Are you following my friends? If you trade, I'm sure you will what? And to trade, you have to be focused. And what do you focus on? What do you focus on when you are trading? You focus on your seed, on what they've given you. Focus on this, your life. Focus. Focus. 100% focus. 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 Oh, I, I was looking at this scripture this afternoon. It means that if I continue to trade with this church, it means I will gain. It means if I trade with this, with this woman, I will gain. If I trade with my marriage, I will gain. If I trade with my children, I will gain. If I trade with those that God has given me, I will gain. You can't lie. Guys, are you still trading? Or you already buried, you've already buried your seed. Are you following me? Ask yourself, am I still trading? No, I've buried my seed. 
If you are trading, you won't be discouraged. My dear, you won't be discouraged if you want to trade. What if it's that today that your customers are coming? Discouragement is part of what makes a man bury his seed. It's part of what makes a man bury his pound. Part of what make, makes a man bury his life. You have to overcome discouragement. You have to say no to discouragement. I know that market was not good yesterday, but you have to rise up with courage and go back to the market today. <laughs> Guys, go back to the market. Go back and trade. Keep doing the right things. Trading means you keep doing the right things regardless. Do the right things. Do the right things. Keep continue to do the right things, no matter what's happening around you. Do the right things. Do what God has told you to do. Focus on what God has given you. <laughs> In this church, we will continue to do the right thing. We will continue to pray. We will continue to evangelize. We will continue to preach. We will continue to show love. Oh, and one day, boom, the harvest will come. And when we are giving account of the harvest, we'll talk about the days of losses. Are you following me? We'll remember these days. I will say there was a time <laughs> when our Bible study, you know how many people used to go. There was a time, this was our number. And it will make the entire story sweet. You know that those things make the story sweet? Guys, your failures make the eventual sweet. Success of your story makes it sweet. Are you following me? See, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about two experiences. Only, only one of them is so sweet. It's good to experience. Someone that got married and had a child immediately. You understand? You just got married now and in nine months time, ten months, you already have a child. You know when you come to give testimony in church, they just praise God with you. Thank God for your life. But people who have been married for 50 years, <laughs> are you following me? Are you following me? For 30 years, 40. 30 years, 40 years. Are you following me? And they didn't have a child. Are you following me? The man is now 65 or 70. The wife is now 60. Are you with me? They now have triplets. Or they have one, or even one self. They now have a child, maybe one or twins or triplets when they come to church to give testimony which one is sweeter which one is sweeter the 70 years old that story the testimony is sweeter everybody wants to hear now in fact when they say when pastor said we have two testimonies today our sister and our brother who got married last year god has given them a child they'll come and share their testimony they got married in april last year and this year they already have by January 1st, they already have a child. They said, they'll come and give their testimony. Oh, praise God! Papa, Papa, Kimade, and our dear mother that have been serving God in this house with us for the past 30 years. Hey, God did a great thing in their life. After 40 years of waiting on the Lord, the Lord gave them a twins. They'll come and share their testimony also. You know, you know how the ocean should scatter? When they first give the mic to the new couple that just got married last year, the no, people will say, thank God, thank God. They will say, oh, can I say, you understand what I'm saying? Now, we thank God for your life. It's not mad. That one is not yours. It's not mad. People, what, what do people want to hear? The story of Papa Akimade that I've waited for 40 years. Are you following me? Now, nobody wants the experience of Papa Akimade. <laughs> Who wants that experience? Nobody wants the experience, right? But everybody loves the story. Are you following me? Everybody loves the story. It's beautiful. Are you following me? Oh, friends, your success story is beautiful because it has at the background, are you following me, some stories of failures. Don't remove it. The whole world wants to hear it. 
It is that one that strengthens faith. It's not one that got married in April and, go and, and gave birth in December. It is uh, not strengthening anybody's faith. Are you following me, my friend? Which is faith? Are you following me? There are people there who have been waiting for a child for two years, three years, five years. Are you following me? When they hear the testimony of 40 years, they can believe God. That God will soon come to them. Are you following me? Their faith is, faith is better. That story enters the bulletin. Are you following me? That story flies around. The news carries the story. Can you hear me? No, which news carries the story of someone that got married last year? Oh, in April and gave birth in December. Which, what, 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 what's the big deal? Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Oh, but that 40 years, there's a big deal. Guys, there's a big deal in your story. Can you hear me, my friend? There's a what? There's, I know there are many failures involved in it. I know there are many obstacles. I know there are many limitations, but there's what? There's a big deal in your story. Are you following, my friends? Your story will bear faith in another man. Your story will bear hope in another man. Imagine the man of, that I waited for 40 years, now coming to give his testimony. And someone is in the congregation, they've only waited for three years and already feel like giving up. The, the husband and the wife already feel like divorcing because they don't have a child. They feel like going their separate ways already for three years because, because they've waited for three years. Are you following me? It, they are, they're already planning out to part ways. The man is already planning out to marry another wife. You know when they hear the story of 40 years, you know that is where that nonsense dies. Are you following my friends? They can, they can have faith again. They can live again. Guys, can, can I talk to you? Your story will make others live again. Your story will give others the reason to hope again. Your story will give others the reason to live again. Your story will tell others that it is possible. I don't have anybody to help me. I don't have anybody to help me. That's why my life is like this. When Joseph tells you that he was forgotten, when Joseph tells you that he was in Potiphar's house as a slave, when Joseph tells you that he was in the prison, and from there, he became the prime minister, you can hope again. Guys, can you hear me? When Abraham tells you his story, you can hope again. Guys, can you hear me? Your story will make others hope again. Don't edit it. Don't edit it. How much every man has gained by trading? God is committed to your success, to the success of your seed. And he has taken the failures into account. Are you following me? But ultimately, what he sees, what he expects is what? Is gain. Are you following my friends? Your story is important to the world. Guys, can you hear me? Your story is what? Important to the world. Someone needs your story to live again. That is why you must completely leave all that story. Are you following me? You must complete the process of that story and let's get to the final answer. If you quit now, the final answer won't get there and that story cannot make another person leave. That story cannot make another person hope. Imagine that Joseph gave up in Potiphar's house. What, okay, what, what, what story, what, what hope do you want to gain from that lesson? That he went to Potiphar's house from there, he just lost his destiny, nothing, he just died there. Why, what, what does, you understand, is there any hope there for me? But there's hope when I found that Joseph went to Potiphar's house. From there to the prison, from there to the palace, I know that I can move from zero level and come to where God wants me to be. There's hope. Are you following? Guys, please complete your story. Complete that process. Don't give up. Don't back down. Are you following me? Don't back out. Complete the story. Give, let us see the final answer. We know it already, but work out, work it out, work out the final answer. There's hope there for somebody. Are you following me, my friends? God expects you to gain, my friends. But you gain by trading. You gain by what? Guys, you must keep trading with this seed. You must remain committed to this, your life. You must remain committed to what God has committed to you. 
You must remain committed. You must know, tell yourself that it will end in joy. That this thing will work out. It will work out. I know there are some failures. I know there are some setbacks. I know there are some losses. But the end is what? Is gain if you keep trading. Will you keep trading, my friends? Keep trading. Some of you have only traded for two years. You already want to give what have you traded? Imagine me saying, I'm already tired of, of this church. How long have we stayed? How long? I was about to be one year. I said, I'm tired already. Members, some members are not committed. Some people are not coming. People are not here many. Oh, I'm tired and I'm not doing it. After how many years? Guys, we will trade here. We will trade here. Eh? The harvest will be, will, be, will be massive. We will trade until we get the harvest. That is the spirit here, my friends. And that spirit must rest upon you. You will trade with this in your life once you get the harvest. Are you following me? You are not going to give up at any point. You will keep trading until you gain. We will trade until we gain. That is the spirit here. We will not stop trading because market is tough. Because trading is tough. Are you following me? We will trade until you what? Until we gain. Esther, you will trade until you gain. You are not going to give up at any time. You are going to trade until you gain. That must be the spirit. In the process of trading, there will be some losses, there will be some failures, there will be some difficulties. But we will trade until we gain. Because the person that handed over the seat to us, told us, he says that he wants to see what we have gained. Oh, one day my Lord will ask me, what is your gain? What did you gain from this seat? Jesus is going to, I want to see your gain. He's expecting my gain. Friends, are you hearing me? This scripture, this scripture gave me so much hope as I read it again today. God, God is looking at this church and he's telling me he's expecting my gain. He's expecting gain, massive gain from this church. He's expecting it. Are you following me? God is expecting this church to become a mega church. Are you following me? We might have five committed people today. We might have ten committed people today. Are you following me? But he's expecting a mega church. Yeah, everyone is committed. Everyone is on fire. He's expecting it. He's like, he will ask me. He will ask me. Because he says, how much every man has gained? One day we come into say, come and show me your gain in this church. Oh, and that's why we keep trading. When we have service and we only have three people, we keep what? We keep trading. The day that 20 people come, we keep what? We keep trading. The day that there are five, we keep what? We keep trading. When the auditorium will be full, we keep what? We keep trading. When we buy properties and, people, and everywhere is filled up, we keep trading. When we, are you following my friends? When we cause a massive revival in this city, we keep what? We keep trading. We keep trading. Guys, don't stop trading. Guys, say don't stop trading. Don't, the mistake you must not make in your life is to stop trading. Don't stop trading, please. Don't give up. That's what I'm talking to you about. Don't do what? Don't give up. Don't give up. Your story will inspire others. If you don't give up. Nobody here will give up. Are you following my friend? You will keep trading with your seed. You will trade with your pound. Oh, and, I'm, and I know you will gain. Oh, man, I'm all shut up. John chapter 15 verse 1. God is committed to the success of your seed. He wants you to gain. That's the only thing, that's the only thing he wants. John 15 verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. I am what? The true vine. Guys, the vine is true. Can you say the vine is true? What you proceed from is true. It's not false. The seed is true. The seed is powerful. I am the true vine. 
The tree you are attached to is true. It's a true one. It's not a false one. It's a real one. Not legit. Are you following me? Are you with me? The one that sent you, the one that handed over the life to you, that handed over the assignment, that handed over the sin to you, is true. And you are not existing without him. You are attached to him. And it's true. And my father is who? Is the husband man. Is the one taking care of the vine. Guys, God is in charge of this, your life. God is in charge of this, your seed. He's the husband man. He didn't leave you as a branch without, without, without a caretaker. Are you following me? Are you following me? When someone plants a seed or anything, are you following me? That they are watching over it doesn't mean that weed, weed cannot still grow around it. Talk to me. When you plant something that you are taking care of it very well, doesn't mean that weed cannot still grow around it. Weed is to grow. Part of your work is to what? Is to remove the weed. Guys, God is in charge of your life. Don't think that God has left you because there are weeds around your seed. Can you hear me? Are you following me? Are you with me? Some of you think that God has left you, that God no longer cares, because you now look at your garden, you look at your seed, you look at your life, and you can see weeds around it. And so, can I talk to you? <coughs> can I talk to you? There's weed around your life because there's no trend in your life. Are you following me? If there were no nutrients, the weed cannot grow. The weed cannot survive. Weeds are content. They are contending for the nutrient that is already existing in your life. Guys, are you following me? Your, what, what am I saying? The weeds are there because your life is beautiful. Guys, can you hear me? Because your life is what? Because the land is arable. That's why the weeds are growing. Have you seen in a, in a, in, in, on TV, have you seen those desert lands before? That is only sand. Have you seen weed there? So even weed self, weed does not grow everywhere. Guys, can you hear me? Weed does not grow what? Weed grow on arable lands. Are you hearing me? On lands that have nutrients. Are you hearing me, my friends? The weeds around your life is a proof that your life is not a desert. Oh, friends, you can't hear me. Are you following me? What did I say? The weeds around your life is a what? Is a proof that what? Your life is not a desert. Nothing grows in the desert. Not even weeds. Are you following me? And you have a non band man. Part of his work is to pull up the weeds. Are you following me? Part of his work is to what? Is to pull up the weeds. Is to pull up the weeds. Is to what? Pull up the weed. But there are some weed you don't pull off until the plant itself is strong enough. Oh, are you following me? Because sometimes you cannot even identify the weed from the, from the real plant. You cannot, you cannot separate them. You can't distinguish them. If you try to pull off the weed, guys, can you hear me, my friends? If you try to pull off the weed at some particular time, you can pull off the real plants. Are you following me? So maybe your husband man, maybe it's God, your caretaker, is still watching those weeds grow so that your plants can be strong enough. Are you following me, my friend? So that what? Your plants can be strong enough. So that your plants can have its own identity. It can have a, 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 it can have a solid enough identity. It can have enough strength. That we are now pulling up the weed. That, 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 that we are not, we, we, we are not using pesticide. It does not affect the plants. There's a stage that if you use pesticide, the original plant will what? We die. Are you hearing me? The original plant will what? We die. But the time will come that if you now use pesticide, the only, the only thing that will die is the weed. The plant will live because it is now strong. Guys, your life is building stamina. You have an husband man. You are attached to the true vine. And you have an husband man. The father himself is the husband man. <coughs> Can you hear me, my friend? Cast all your care upon who? Upon the Lord. Why? For he cares for you. He cares about your fruitfulness. He cares about your profit. He cares about your gain. 
That is why he's the husband man. He's the, watch, he's the one watching over the seed. He's the one watching over your life. Verse 2. Every branch in me that bearing no fruit, he take it away. Can you hear this? Every branch in me that does what? Bearing no fruit, he does what? He saves us, he cuts off. Why? Because he only has one expectation concerning what? Every branch attached to him. What, what, what's his expectation? Fruitfulness. Gain. Oh, friends, can you hear me? If at the end of your life, they now write all the questions, now write final answer, they now write failure, losses, blatant failure. God cannot, really, God cannot understand it. He's shocked. And himself will cut you off. He's shocked. That after adding everything, you now losses, failure. That's the final answer. He's shocked. He can't, he can't understand it. He said, the branch, every branch that bear enough to take it away, he cuts off. He can't, that means the only expectation he has for whatever is attached to him, for his children, for what proceeds from him, for your life. The only expectation he has is the expression of what? Of fruitfulness. Are you following me? Are you with me? And he's not just talking about spiritual fruitfulness, that you have the fruit of the spirit. He's talking, or he's also talking of your greatness in life. He's talking of things working out eventually. He's talking of you fulfilling your purpose. He's talking of you, are you following me? Becoming great in God's hands. He's, he's talk, talking of you becoming a success. God wants you to be fruitful. And every branch that bears fruit, uh-huh, he purges it. Why? So that it may bring forth much fruit. Oh, God is expecting much fruit from your life. I'm telling you the final expectation. I'm telling you the final answer. It's fruitfulness. Give me verse 8 and I begin to close. Hear in, hear me, my friends. Hear in is my father glorified. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Hear in is what? Is my father glorified that ye bear, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. How is God glorified? That you bear fruit. God is glorified in your fruitfulness. Guys, guys, guys. Your failure does not glorify God. Your smallness does not glorify God. Your hardship does not glorify God. Your lack does not glorify God. Are you following me? When we hard up everything, at the end of the day, what we want to see is fruitfulness. That is the only thing that glorifies God. Are you following me? Because some of you, you have equated hardship to spirituality. That God, oh, I'm just following God. You're not following God. He's not God. What he expects is fruitfulness. What glorifies him is fruitfulness. Don't forget I've told you that in the process to come into fruitfulness eventually, there will be some failures. So I'm not talking about those failures. Those failures must happen. Those limitations must happen. They are part of the equation. I'm talking about the eventuality of your life. Can you hear me? Eventually, <coughs> friends, are you still with me? Praise God. Eventually, what will glorify God in your life is what? His fruitfulness is that you make gain. His gain is the profitability of your life. His gain is glorified. God is glorified when you are great. Talk to me. What does God want to do with your smallness? How does He glorify Him? He doesn't glorify Him. God doesn't want to see you small. God doesn't want you what? Small. God wants you big. God wants you great. God doesn't want this church small. God wants this church mega. Friends, can you hear me? Boy, he can wait until we arrive there. As long as we keep what? We keep trading. Guys, can you hear me? God wants your life mega. But he's not rushing you. Are you hearing me? He keeps pulling you. He can wait until you arrive there. As long as you keep what? Trading. But you must know what God wants. That's what I'm telling you. You must know what he wants from your life and what he's committed to. Are you hearing me? You now you, 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 you hear some people they now say, oh, the way we are in this church, it shows that we are on fire for God. That's why we are not many. It's not true. We can be on fire and be many. And we, we will be on fire and be mega, not just many. Are you hearing me? That we are the remnants. We are the remnants. We are the only ones serving God in this city. It's not true. There are many people serving God as I told you that be. We will keep at this trading. Are you following me? And we will be mega. Mega in spirit. Mega in number. 
mega in wealth, mega in revival, mega in influence. Friends, can you hear me? This your life will be mega. Are you hearing me? Friends, can you still hear me? God does not want you small. Are you, are you following me? You can start small, but he doesn't want you what? He doesn't want you small. You must not remain small. Are you following me? We can't, see, 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 the story cannot be like this. Are you hearing me, my friends? The story of your life can't be like, it started small and it finished small. That cannot be the story. That is not the script. That is not the script you are, you are called to heart. The script you are called to heart is that what? It started small and it finished great. It became great. And I can show you the script in the Bible. Job chapter 8 verse 7. Job 8 verse 7, I think. That's the script. Is it Job 8 verse 7? Is it there? Though that beginning be small. Fast, 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 fast. Is it Job 8 verse 7? I made a mistake. Job 8 7. It's Job 8 7. Glory to Jesus. What's happening with your laptop? Is, is, is it part of our process? <laughs> ah, it worked now. Though the beginning uh -huh, was small, uh -huh. yet the latter hand uh -huh, should. Can you say should? Can you say should? Can you say should? The latter hand should what? Should increase? Should increase? No, 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 no. You are not reading the Bible. The latter hand should what? Should greatly increase. So I'm telling you, this is the script. I know the script. Though that beginning was small. Guys, beginnings are small. Beginnings can be small, there's no problem. You can start small, but you should not end small. That's a wrong script. Are you following me? This is the script of your life. Though that beginning was small, though you started with a little seed, though you started with an insignificant seed, Though things did not work out in some part of the process, but what is the latter end? Great increase. Can you say great increase? Guys, that is the will of God. Though the church started with five members, though the church only had ten members attending, attending Sunday services, though the church only had five members attending weekly services, oh, but eventually, their workforce alone during win big service is too much. Are you following? During midweek service, they block on the road. They are cars through the street. Guys, hope you are preparing for these things. People are not abusing us now. Are you following me? Later, they will say, see all their cars. They just they park big, big cars. They block road. We will block the road. <laughs> Guys, hope you are ready to block road. We will block the road. Are you hearing me? The blockage will start from Afolabi, start from, are you following me? It's not, it's, I'm not saying we'll block the streets, we'll block the roads. It, you, the, block, the traffic will have started. People are already coming to church here, they're already parking their cars at the gondo. Because there's no place to park again. We need to be buying empty lands to, for, for, for car parts. If like, you know, amen, I'm not praying. I'm telling you what will happen, eventuality. The latter end should greatly increase. It's a mega church. Are you following me? There might be five committed members today who come for services regularly. But it's a mega church. And that's what we are looking at. That's what we are trading with. Are you hearing me? That's why when I come to teach you what, I come to teach like I'm preaching to a full auditorium. As if I'm preaching to a stadium, to the national stadium. That's true, right? I don't come as if, as if I'm, I'm, I say maybe it's five people that will come or maybe there are seven people or ten people. No, no, no. I come like I'm coming to preach to one million people. Because eventually, the latter shall greatly increase. Should greatly increase. Guys, do this your life as though you are sure of increase. Are you following me? How should, how should you do your life? Do it as someone sure of what? 
Of if some of you are doing your life as, as if this is the way your life will end. Oh, friends, are you hearing me? The way some of you are doing life, you, you are doing as if the way your life is now, that that's how it will end. It's going to end like that. How will it end like that? If you are, if you are ready to show that this is how your life is, quickly tell me, just let, let me send you away from my church. Don't, don't let me, don't let me stress myself. Why I'm teaching is because I know that this is not how your life went, and you must know it yourself. If you have decided in your heart that this way my life is now, is that it will end? Please, call, just go. Don't waste my time. Are you following me? I'm showing you the script of your life. Your life can not end like this. How will it end? Like, what, what do you have? What have you done in life? What have you achieved? You have not bought me a car. You have not said, Pastor, ah, you have labored over me. Take the key of this mansion. What have you? You have, you have not given me offering. Well, you have said your life went like It will not end like this. <laughs> Are you with me, my friends? Your life cannot end like this, oh. Ima, you will buy a car for me. Nobody, nobody say I know you. Nobody say I, I, I not go feel buy car for myself, oh. But you go just present Pastor car. Say Pastor, take you try for me. You say Pastor, you try for me. I just buy this Ferrari for you, Pastor. Take car and you deserve it. Now new, now cha cha. Ten nylon. Guys, can you hear me? That's it. You will buy a house for me. Your life cannot end like this. How will it end like this? Me or this one more? How will it end like this? Anyway, you think your life will end like this? It can't end like this. Are you hearing me? Your lifetime will what? To greatly increase. There will be great increase. Over this life I'm looking at, there will be great increase. There will be great increase. You, th- you think my own life will end? My life cannot end like this. I've not bought a car for my wife yet. An ordinary car I've not bought for her. I've not taken her on trips. I've not done anything for her, you know what I'm saying? My, it cannot end. I know it can't end like this. I will spoil this woman with the good things of life. I hope you are ready. Look at my face. Don't go and do spirituality. It's part of it. We we'll enjoy this life. <laughs> Somewhere it's true, right? What have I done for this woman? No bought car for her. I've not bought anything. What I've not bought anything. Not saying my life where my like this. I'm still trekking my life. Ah, it can't end. It can't end like this. I've not, I've not looked at her fiancé traffic. Just take this car. So cool. Are you following me? My life cannot end like this. The church has not grown yet. How will it end like this? We, we, we've, not, we've not divided the church into smaller units. Because it's too big. So that, so that the members can know themselves. We've not divided into smaller units yet. That in a unit, we are in a group. We have like 20, 20 people. So that they can be able to, we are, they have pastors. We don't have divided them. Now say my life will end. My life will end with 10 members. God forbid. <laughs> with 5 members. It cannot end. Guys, this your life cannot end like this. So. I know it's not going well yet, but I'm telling you it cannot end like this. So. The beginning can be small. Can you hear me? The beginning can be small, but what will happen to your latter end? Though? It's great increase though. That is the plan, though. And that is what glorifies God, though. That is what, what? Guys, what glorifies God? Your poverty does not glorify God. Are you, are you following me? Your smallness does not glorify God. Go back to my scripture. God is glorified in your fruitfulness. Can I say God is glorified in my fruitfulness? That is the only thing that glorifies him in your life. That's the only thing that does what? Glorifies him in your life. So you forget all those stupid Christians that say, yeah, just focus on God, forget the earth. Don't forget the earth is part of the plan. Oh. Peter was asking Jesus, he said, we have left all to follow you. What shall we gain? He said, no one has left father and mother, left houses and cars. No, no, houses are no cars. Houses, houses and land. But in our time, we will put car. Left houses and land that will not inherit what an hundredfold in this life. And the world to come what? Eternal life. If Peter was asking a bad question, those guys would say you are too carnal. Is that not true? Please give me that scripture. Go, go back, go back. Then Peter began to ask, 
to say unto him, Lord, we have left all and have followed thee. Uh-huh. Oh, there's one, there's one part of it. There's one mm, account that says, what shall we have? But well, don't worry. And Jesus answered and said, Very I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands. Some of you know what you have left. For my sake and the gospel's sake. Uh-huh. And some of you have not left anything also. <laughs> but he shall receive an hundredfold when? Now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Oh, why did you give me this one persecution? Remove that persecution part. I don't want this trans, this, this, which persecution? After all, you've already persecuted. You have to give me persecution. And if you want to come into that life. So can you see the mindset of Jesus? Peter said, we have left us. What shall we have? Kill, kill me a rave, kill him again. And Jesus Christ knew his mind. You know, you know he was not talking of eternal gain. Are you following me? That Jesus, I'm serving, I'm serving, I'm serving. What will become of in this life? What we have? Will I have more? Will I buy car? Will I have a... Those guys say, come, come. You will have a lot of it. Can you say you will have a lot of it? So don't mind that is, it is bad Christianity to say, because I'm serving God, let me just suffer. It's good. Let me, I'm close to it. It's not true. Just say you will have it. And in the world to come eternal life. He said he has given us all things richly to enjoy. Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of Light. How shall I know with him? Freely give us all things. Guys, can you hear me? God is only glorified in your what? Go back to my scripture. In your fruitfulness. What glorifies God about your life? Your fruitfulness. Don't forget, that fruitfulness is the eventuality. Because when you plant a tree, eventually. Are you following me? But before the eventuality, there are processes. Are you following me? And I've been, so, what does God do with your process before the fruit come? The process of suffering, the process of lack and all of that. I've told you already. He watches to see the kind of person you become. Are you following me? He, he, are you with me? He watches to, he watches to what? To see the kind of person you become. It, 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 it transfers divine nature into you. So in your process, before the fruitfulness comes, before the gain comes, the process of trading, when there's weakness, when there's lack, when things are not working, what happens to you then? What God wants then? At that time, is the is the is the exchange of your nature. He wants you to be changed. He wants you to accrue divine nature, to develop divine nature. Are you with me? But eventually, what glorifies him in your life is your fruitfulness. That ye bear more. Yen is my father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Eventually, are you following me? Jesus Christ says the proof that one thing that will prove that we are disciples what is our fruitfulness. Please, 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 please. We like to interpret, interpret scriptures the way we just enjoy, the way we enjoy, the way that suits us. Jesus, this fruitfulness here is not just spiritual. Are you following me? So that you can understand it, don't go there in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. He, he said, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Did he say, Be, be a spiritual fruit, fruit of the Spirit? So don't just see this scripture in John. Before me, when, when, when I was overly spiritual in university, I used to see it as just fruit of the spirit. It's not just fruit of the spirit, though. Are you following me? It's not just fruit of the body. <laughs> are you following me? Then, uh, then our fathers are fruitful. So are you following? Fruitfulness in every, can you say fruitfulness in every area? Fruitfulness in your spirit, in your soul, in your body. He said, he said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou may what? That thou may yet prosper and what? And being in health, even as your soul prospers. Fruitfulness in every area. It glorifies him. I said, that is how you, you be my disciple. That is the proof of true discipleship. Oh, friends, can you hear me? Can you give me five minutes and I close? What did Jesus Christ mean that your fruitfulness will show that you are my disciple? Are you ready? He said, so shall you be my disciple. He said, that, that will be the proof that you are my disciple. He said, your fruitfulness is what? Is the proof of you being my disciple. Is the proof of discipleship. Now, what am I talking Fru- Fruitfulness out in every area. Are you following me? Fruitfulness in your spirit? Fruitfulness in your soul? Fruitfulness in your body? Can you hear me now, my friends? Are you following me? This guy is, says what? It is the proof of your what? Of you being my what? Talk to me. Of you being my what? Of you being my disciple. Can I tell you why? 
Because when you are fruitful in every area, it shows that you are obedient to the master. Luke 19 verse 13. It shows that you are living a life of obedience, that you are doing what they ask you to do. Let me show you. Luke 13 verse 19. 19, 13. Look at it. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And what? And said unto them, do what? Occupy till I come. Do business till I come. When he came back, what did he say? To see how much every man had gained by trading. To see how fruitful they had become. Are you following me? He said, he told them, he gave them a command. Do what? Occupy till I come. It was those that obeyed the command that did what? That became fruitful. And they are the true disciples. Are you following me? So you see, what you're talking about there is that when you, are, when you truly obey me, when you are in my will, when you do what I ask you to do, when you train with your seed, when you focus on what I've given you, it says your life will be fruitful. Are you following me? So you see, the actual thing there is obedience. When you obey God and stay in his will and do what he asks you to do, the end result is that what? All men will see your what? Your profiting. That's in, in, in Timothy. He said, give yourself only to them that their profiting may appear to all men. Can you hear me? So, if you give yourself to the word of God, to the things God has said to you, to the things God has committed to your hand, your profiting will appear to all men. You will be fruitful and it's a proof of discipleship. Are you following me? Now, guys, you need to understand. Please, don't misquote the word of Jesus. He said, he said, he said, so shall you be my disciples through fruitfulness. You need to understand it. Why? Because fruitfulness, are you following me? It's a result of persistence obedience. Are you following me? Fruitfulness is the result of persistently doing what God has told you to do. Fruitfulness is the result of persistently staying in the will of God. Persistently staying where God has planted you. Meditate, meditate upon these things. Give thyself only to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Are you following me? So profiting is as a result of giving yourself to what they, they told you to do. Are you following me? It means that you are obedient. You are doing what they asked you to do. You are committed to things they've committed to your hands. You will profit. You'll be fruitful. Are you following me? So eventually, if I look at your life, eventually at the end of everything, and I cannot see fruit, I can know that you do obey God. Friends, can you hear me? You still don't believe me. If I look at your life eventually and I don't see fruit, I can only have one conclusion. That what? That what? You didn't obey God. You are not a true disciple. You didn't obey. You, are not, you didn't obey. You didn't do what he asked you to do. Can I prove to you again? He says in Isaiah chapter 19, 1 verse 19. He says, if you are fruit, if you are what? Willing and what? And obedient. You will do what? You will eat the fruit of the land. If you are what? Willing and obedient. You will eat the fruit of the land. You understand? So fruitfulness happens when you are obedient. And obedience is a proof of true disciples of true discipleship. So it says that fruitfulness is a proof of true discipleship. Are you following me? Because I can only be fruitful when I do what he asked me to do. He says, occupy till I come. If you don't occupy, you can't be fruitful. The, the, the servant that didn't occupy was not fruitful. And that was not a true servant. He said, You wicked servant. Are you following me? Guys, your life must pro- produce fruit for God in every area. Are you following me? And the proof of true discipleship. Because it shows that you are doing what the Lord asks you to do. It shows that you are committed to your seed. It shows that you have stayed where God has planted you. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I'll continue this teaching next week, Thursday, by God's grace. Can you just see? I've shown you this evening God's commitment to your success. Can you pray? Can you just pray in like five minutes? And tell God that you will trade. That you, are, that you commit to your seed. That you commit to the process. That you commit to the process, that you commit yourself to the process of God. That you commit yourself to your seed. That you commit yourself to the things that God has committed to you. And that you commit yourself to the process. That you will not give up. Can you pray? Can, can you just can you just pray and commit yourself? God Himself is committed to your success. But can you yourself tell God that God I'm committed to my own success? Can you pray and talk to God?